So a couple months ago, Glary Guitars sent a guitar and we did a giveaway and uh, it got a lot of views. And so Glary reached out and said, would you like to check out anything else? I wanted to see, here's the box right here. Glary instruments. I wanted to see how well the bass guitar did. So let's open up the box. Take a look at what's inside. I picked out the color. So I'm really curious about that. Curious to see how good it looks. So this is how the box ships. They ship them in the wedge boxes. Uh, the last one got here safe. This one looks pretty good. I mean, there's very little minimal damage or marks on it, but who knows? <laughs> uh, ah, well, that would explain it. The other one didn't come like this. This one is encased in carbonite. No, I'm just kidding, styrofoam. It's encased in styrofoam. So uh, that's something you see common with uh, the import guitars coming from the Asia, right? Let's take a look. Again, let's cut this tape, okay? And it's literally, hold on, uh, there we go. Look at that. Your, uh, the kids will love you for having that around. Uh, so it is literally encased in the styrofoam. It seems small. We're gonna have to get measuring tape out. This actually might be cooler than I think. Why does it look small? Is it a short scale base? What did I order? <laughs> okay, so let's just pull it out. This thing, you know what? I hate these things. Don't you hate how they... Yeah, we'll just do that. It's very light. The guitar was light. This is super, super light. It's yellow. It could be full size. It feels now more like full size, but we'll measure. We'll make sure what scale it is before we go any further. Let's just put it on this table. The yellow, uh, when I saw it online, I thought the yellow was a bright yellow. This is definitely like a school bus yellow, which is still cool because I thought it'd be different than, than, you know, a black or a white one or something. The next very chunky, uh, and we'll talk about that. And again, like the other one, rough finish on the neck. Uh, in fact, especially right here, rough. Uh, I would I would just take some, some light sand. I would actually just take a piece of steel wool and just, you know, like I said, put some painter's tape over your pickups and then just wipe this down. Some of you guys don't like steel wool, but it's just something that it's just easy, it's cheap, uh, and all of this could be finished up with some steel wool. Um, it doesn't need to be fully sanded. Very rough, but of course, action is pretty high. But the neck feels good, even though it's chunky. Frets, little bit of sprout, uh, unlike the last one. And definitely fret sprout on this one. Okay, so I got some measuring tape out. Just curious, 34 inch scale length. So it just seems small. I think the body is smaller than a P base. Uh, it's definitely maybe a little thinner, but it's, definitely narrower. So it's a smaller body and it is so light. I mean, this would be great. If the neck wasn't so thick, I'd say it'd be great for a really small player, but the neck's kind of chunky. So uh, first question is, where is it made? This one is made undisclosed. Let's look at the packaging. And um, nowhere does it say. <laughs> doesn't say product of China or Indonesia. The other one I'm pretty sure was made in China. So I'm going to say where it was made is in China. Although I don't know that for sure because it doesn't say anywhere on it, but I'm going to say made in China. Uh, what does it sell for? This, uh, this particular model sells shipped uh, under $100. I think when I looked, when they shipped it, I think it was $85 shipped. So I'll put the price right here. Who would be the right player for this uh, base? This is definitely for a beginner. <laughs> uh, of course, I haven't really dug into it, but I think a lot of players, uh, beginning players, wouldn't have noticed the rough sand that I'm talking about. Although fit and finish wise, even on an instrument like this, um, 
maybe intermediate if you had to take this. Like I could tell you, honestly, if you had to play a song or two on it, of course you could do that. Of course, you could pretty much play anything. I mean, you could get music out of any instrument if you, if you really want to. Um, so of course, could a, a, a gigging musician or a guitar player uh, that wants to play a song on bass or play a set list? Of course, you could do that too. But I'm just saying it's geared, my gut says it's geared for a beginner uh, player. What does the neck feel like? The neck is very thick, very chunky. Definitely not like a Fender Jazz bass and not like a Fender P bass. If you picked up a Mexican uh, made Fender P bass or even a Squire P bass, that neck would be thinner than this. This neck is really thick. I wouldn't say the thickest bass neck I've ever played, but I would put it in my top five thickest bass necks I've ever played. So a little thick, which is, could be good. I bet you it's gonna kind of resonate really well from that. Let's see, what are the materials used? Well, the neck looks maple, the fretboard looks rosewood, the body is basswood. This thing is like air. In fact, the neck feels like, it's not top heavy, although you wouldn't know, because unfortunately I put a strap, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. But holding it like this, I can feel a little bit of a dive because I feel like the neck is the weighs more than the, the actual body. And I'm pretty sure I'm right if I took them apart. I don't even have to kind of do that, I think I, I'm pretty done enough of these. I'm, I'm telling you, the neck weighs as much, or if not more, than the body. We have a standard bent style bridge. Uh, it's very inexpensive, but nothing wrong with that. Same kind of bass bridge you'd see on any other instrument. Saddles look good. Uh, potentiometers. Uh, you have a volume and a tone control, an output jack, and of course, P bass pickups. All of this stuff, I'm sure, rivals uh, a, a low priced uh, Squire instrument or something like that. Obviously, it's going to be lower grade type electronics. Uh, tuning keys look great. Uh, they're, these are actually the upgraded tuning keys or tuning machines. So some of the really low end basses have those, those really horrible enclosed gear capped off ones that are squared off. This is really nice, and I can tell automatically just touching them. They're a better quality tuning key. This is what you would see on a Fender bass, a Squire bass, I should say. These are keys that you would see on a Squire bass, I would say that's at least $250, $300. So obviously uh, that's great that it's on a sub $100 instrument. In fact, I bet you a set of tuning keys like this cost you at least 25 bucks, even on Amazon or something like that. What is the best feature? I think the best feature is, <laughs> ironically, how light it is but also how cheap it is. Uh, I think on the Glary instruments, I hate to say it, they're, um, they're a price-driven product. It's, you know, how do you get a great price? Um, this is great for someone who wants to work on a bass, maybe learn to work on instruments, somebody a beginner again. In fact, think of it this way. You could, if your significant other doesn't play an instrument and they want to uh, learn to play along with you, when you play guitar, you could get them a bass. And something like this is a low investment. You don't have to worry about if it pans out. Uh, you know, there you go. What should your expectation be? The expectation that I uh, have here, so if I was setting your expectation, in other words, if you open this out of the box after watching this video, how do I make it to where you have an experience that relates to mine? I would expect that the frets are sticking out a little bit. These are rough. Um, not unplayable. They're not so sharp and bad that they're unplayable, but they definitely need to be uh, taken care of. And I have a video, I'll put one up here that you can go to and it shows you how you could do that. However, definitely needs to to be done. Let's take a look and play it. I'm just going to play all the notes. Wow, very impressed with the fret work um, on this instrument. And I'm sure you could say, well, Glary sent you the instrument for review, so maybe they picked out a great one. I would honestly say if they picked me out an instrument for review trying to impress me, this, this is not the one because they would have addressed the other issues, I'm assuming. So very impressive how the frets are seated in. There's no dead spots. Now I mentioned the action's a little high, but remember it's a bass. So I it's too high for me because I slap bass. 
But out of the box, could you just play this? I sure you could, sure you could. I, and if I was gonna lower it, I would just lower the, the saddles just a little bit. So uh, my expectation would be, uh, you know, I, out of the options, which is perfect, may need some love or great for mods, I would say may need some love. It's actually better than the last category I put it in the middle. Your expectation should be, you know, it's a C student, if you will, <laughs> right? It's not gonna impress you. There's just no way, uh, even for the price point. I don't think it's gonna blow your doors off, but I think you will be uh, not regretting if this is what you got. Is there a learning curve? And if so, uh, it, what is it? Um, a learning curve. In other words, you have to learn. No, I mean, if you know how to play the bass, then you just know how to play it. There's no like a fan fret system. You have to figure out, re re rework your thinking. If you don't want one of the shorter scale basses I've recommended in the past, I think just getting a, a basic P bass is a great idea. And um, this will stick out, right? You could be in the band, get your bus yellow, cool, glary guitar, and you'll be set. What does it come with? You get a standard guitar cable and an Allen wrench. Very easy. Interesting enough, if you noticed on this one, it doesn't come with that little thin gig bag like the guitar did. So not that that's a huge loss because that wasn't a gr very great bag, but it's um, interesting that it didn't come with that. So lastly, I guess the last question is, how does it play? Well, again, the neck is pretty thick and I found myself really kind of having to work it to get uh, to get it to play right. The action is okay. Like I said, uh, you might make have to make some small adjustments. There's a little bit of fret sprout. So again, uh, for $79.99, it's a great value in the idea that you will get a bass. It is playable. You can make music with it. However, you may need to put a little effort into it, but it's hard to knock something that's sub $100 as a value point uh, for what you're paying. Um, so you have to decide for yourself if you want to save up and get something a little nicer or maybe experiment with this. But I think if you're looking for a very inexpensive P-Base to either work on, upgrade, maybe learn on, I think this is a, a choice that you can consider. Uh, again, uh, I was overly impressed like I was on the last one in the idea for what it is, pretty good. But keep in mind, you're not getting a whole lot more than what you anticipate. Don't think that you're getting a $500 base, sub $100 deal, that's not what's happening here. Again, it's just an inexpensive base that will give you something to work with. I hope that helps you guys out. As always, I wanna thank you so much for your time. Until the next time, know your gear. Mm -hmm.